Jets and Giants NFL Network reporter Kim Jones at the breakfast table all day long. We've been talking about these teams. Look, we have the papers, the back pages. Yes. All of so much drama and juicy, just storylines. Story yes, ahead of training mm -hmm. camp. So I want to get your expert opinion on a few things. I know D'Angelo yes. has questions as well. So Melvin Gordon, as we know, yet to re reach the long-term deal with the Chargers. He was really vocal, though, in supporting his guy Le'Veon Bell through his decision to sit out with the Steelers last season. Do you foresee the Le'Veon Bell method being a thing, sort of pattern, a precedent for how an elite or the perception of an elite running back sort of negotiates their contract? You know, I, I think it would be very hard as a competitor to do what he did. Yeah. And I think you had to have missed the game and everything else. He obviously took a gamble that financially we could go through the numbers, you know, may not have actually paid off in terms of dollars or, and cents. Now, he may feel good that he took a stand. And that you can't put a price tag on in mm -hmm. life, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. that I'm willing to give him. What I'm most interested in when it comes to him is, is there any rust? He hasn't played football in two years. You know, is there going to be something in training camp where they manage his workload at all? Or is he ready to come in and be 100%? He's going to be very important to Sam Darnold and the Jets. There's no doubt about that. I do think getting there is going to be very interesting for Bell. He's such a special player that my worry is that players that maybe aren't at his level with his leverage and, it may, and didn't even work out really in his favor right. are going to try to go for it. When not every, like, This situation doesn't come up every year. This isn't about somebody like Zeke Elliott or Melvin Gordon wanting a new deal. This was a franchise tag situation. This was him and all of his receptions that he racked up and wanting that and to be that poster boy for making change, I would just right. use him more of a cautionary tale. Right. Well, and say really goodbye to 14.5 yeah, million that yeah. we'll never get that back. To but me, that's to the me, thing, too. If he comes out and balls this year, and he is the MVP of the league, he gets to the Jets to the playoff for the first time in forever, then other running backs are going to say, huh, maybe I should just save my legs like he did. It worked. I know. And you think about a guy like him, we talked about running backs taking all these hits. Le'Veon Bell is going to be fresh. Mm -hmm. This dude mm -hmm. has not taken a right. hit in, in over a year. His body is going to be fresh. I think he's going to jump right in and, and, and be what the Jets need, especially um, with a young quarterback. You have to establish that run game. Um, but let me ask my question. Okay. Then. So, um, <laughs> I know. You I can know, do whatever you want. I know. I know. <laughs> what, have you, what have you seen from Eli Manning and his interactions with Daniel Jones, the sixth overall pick? Um, I know I've heard Ben say, hey, I'm not helping if, a guy if we draft. I know right. that's not Eli's no. kind of mindset, but, you know. Take us in that locker room. The two of you should come to Giants training camp. Let's go. The one thing you have yeah. to get to over, because you kind of have to get over it to then watch, watch practice, they have some of the same mannerisms. So it is a little bit up. weird. I mean, there is a similarity up. there just in how they stand, how they go about drills, you know, how they <laughs> kind of look and gaze, you know, yeah. at practice. Uh, I think Eli is going to be Eli in terms of, Someone's always welcome to sit with him at breakfast to learn from him and everything else. I do find this interesting. Pat Shermer on the night they drafted Daniel Jones said that it was Eli's job to keep him off the field. In other words, play well enough so the rookie doesn't. Mm. Now, more recently, Eli has said, I don't feel like it's a competition. Keep this in mind. Only in my experience, Derek Jeter is better at diffusing the New York media than Eli Manning. So. Eli saying, I don't think it's a competition, is probably to take a situation that could be here and try to keep it right about here. It. Yeah. Off the field, you know what Eli's like. You said he's one of the best diffusers. In your, in your interactions with Daniel Jones so far, do you feel like he can grow into that role and that part of it, which played huge into Eli's success here in this market? Yeah, and importantly, Kay, I do think he seems like his own man, young man, okay. but in his own man, and he does seem confident, and he, does, he can uh, do multiple one-on-one -on -one interviews. I saw him one day do probably 15 wow. because there were a million cameras there that day. Yeah, I think he can hold his own. Love it. I want to ask you about He that. didn't lose a game yet, though. That's or throw true. Exactly. That's true. It all exactly. changes. These back pages are lethal. We'll get into that and what it's like to yes. work in this market market a little bit later but Baker Mayfield I mean just just launched shade at the city of New York yesterday like on a slingshot he was talking to ESPN and he said this about Odell Beckham he's here to play in front of fans who actually care who will actually show up to every game and pack the stadium and love him for who he is come on Kim why take a shot at Giants fans like that? Come on. Well, we could do a comparison in terms of attendance over the years and everything else. I will say MetLife Stadium gets awfully quiet when, whether it's the Giants or the Jets, Are you start defending losing. Baker? I, I, you know, here's what I think Baker was doing. I think he was defending Odell, who takes an awful lot of shots. Yeah. I, I understand he's out there, but he takes an 
awful lot of the criticism now of him is as if he was an average receiver for the New York Giants. And yeah. that simply was not the case. Yeah. Uh, so people are now talking about him as if he's easily replaceable by a slot receiver. And by the way, didn't matter very much anyway. And I'm sure Baker is sensitive to that because he would be. I think yeah. he has his teammates back there. So I think that's what he was doing. He was not 100 percent wrong, though. You sit in that press box at MetLife Stadium and things start to go south. Oh, yeah. It gets very, very quiet. But oh, Saquon yeah. breaks off a run and everyone's on their they feet. They love that. Yeah. But they loved Odell's touchdowns, too. Yes, the, they the did. The concern is, is this going to be a weekly thing? Baker gets up to a podium, does a one-on-one, -on -one, is in the scrum, and I, says some sort of inflammatory thing? I think thing? so. It's who he is. And it's, it's, it's why we love him. It's why I kind of fell in love with him through the draft process. It's not because a problem. I said, he, doesn't, he doesn't act like a quarterback. We just talked about Eli Manning being the perfect politician in front of the New York media. And he's, yeah, you know, it's not going to be a competition and all this stuff. He'll say the right things. If that's Baker and you're asking him 10 years from now, oh, yes, it's a competition. Me and him, we're going at it. And I bet I win. I just don't and like that's it. What, that's, what, that's what people like, though. Him saying that. If I'm a Giants fan, it's easy for me to connect the dots of Odell was trashing Giants fans to the new locker room, the new city, the new court. Even if yeah. that's not true, I don't know that that's true. But yeah. Baker has never been to a Giants game. Maybe he has, but probably not as many as Odell or you have been at. So to me, it makes it seem that's just I, I, mean, I would connect the dots. I think the Giants TV, fans though. are mad for a reason. I you know Giants fans love. I think Giants fans love Odell. They might think he's polarizing. They might not like a lot of his antics. But for me, was it necessary for him to do that? No. So if that's going to be the story all season. And yeah, they can, it can be non-stories until he does it once and it's something mm -hmm. actually that really offends somebody right. or really shifts the dynamic of how people look at him. Ah, he's polarizing, okay. I, know. That's what I like the love guy about who can it's, do it, though, be, and then, and then hang in there with it. Unapologetic, yeah. 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 If he yeah. throws 40 touchdowns, everyone's going <laughs> to yeah, no shut up. Care. Uh, back in March when Odell Beckham Jr. was traded from the Giants to the Browns, you shared a heartwarming story at NFL Network about Odell, the person and not the player. Do you predict that we're going to see any sort of different version of Odell this season as a person in his future with Cleveland? Well, I'm, as I've said to him, including on camera in an NFL Network interview, I hope so. And that doesn't mean I think Odell should change. I don't think Odell needs to change. I think if Odell shows people who he really is, it's very hard not to like him. Um, now, in East Rutherford, there's some in the hierarchy who don't like Odell. Everyone in the locker room loves him. Every cafeteria worker likes him. The maintenance workers like him. That's how he was in that building. A teammate told me everyone here loved him and anyone who tells you differently is lying. Again, the hierarchy didn't, not anymore. But the people in that building who dealt with him the most loved him. You know, someone said to me, you know, last time he made the Pro Bowl in Hawaii, what did he do? I said, I, I don't remember. Well, he took all the receivers and his position coach. A lot of guys don't do that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, he gets a lot of endorsements. His teammates are included in an awful lot of those giveaways and that kind of thing. He had a truck of mattresses brought to the... He has some mattress deal. I mean, who knows? It's good to be Odell. But there was... In the park, players' parking lot, there was an enormous truck with mattresses. And players, coaches, anyone in the building could go get mattresses, pillows, want. and everything. Yeah. If they want... Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing that he would do. And he desperately desperately wants to win. But if he's that person, how does he show that now? How, is it, is well, it by well, limiting others? you know what, others? okay, people how, want okay, you to like show it, that. Sometimes it's not up to you to show that. Like, mm. like he's not doing it for that kind of attention. Correct. That, like, that's I'm, I'm going to no, tell the course. story about Odell, too, that made me, as even a competitor of him, be like, man, I rock with this dude. Like, and then when I got in the media, I tend to defend him because I know genuinely what kind of person he is Why, and happened? as a competitor on the us. field i'm gonna tell you the story but as a competitor on the field you know you want to go you want to go yeah. you want to go and to be able to know how to turn that off but the story is this i know we're, 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 say we're gonna say i'll tell you in a minute okay i'll tell you in a minute that's what we call a tease <laughs> very well done we'll be back with that story because i don't know